the Bible, one of the most underrated and unread books that exist today, yet it remains the number one best-selling book of all time. Most people have at least one or two Bibles in their possession. This means that within a very short radius distance of anyone living in a city, there may be one in your household or one within meters on the same street as you. You can access the Bible online anywhere and at any time. What's so poignant is that its warnings and supernatural messages are surrounding us constantly wherever we go. What many people don't realize, and this is also maybe for those who read the Bible but overlook it, is that within its pages the Bible is the most supernatural book and most prophetic book of our time. It speaks of details concerning the future and writes history in advance. It claims to be the words of God, but is there any substance to these claims? If there is, God himself says, For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Interestingly, the Bible sets this picture up of how everything will look before the return of Christ. In the book of Daniel it says in the last days knowledge will increase and people will travel to and fro around the world, implicating that there will be a rise in technology. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Does the Bible give us any indication of any type of technology we will be using in future? The answer to this is yes. There's a passage in Zechariah 5, but the issue with it is that the translators didn't realize they were making an error, as they chose from the two or three different English meanings for each Hebrew word. We have to remember that if there are two or three words to be translated from one word, depending on the time and culture will sway the translators to their individual bias. In this case, in Zechariah 5, in medieval times, when translating from the Hebrew to the King James Version, they used words from the Hebrew such as wicked witch or woman being cast into a basket. The reason they did this is due to the times they were living in. A container was a basket and wicked witches were being burned on the stake. However, the most sensible and straightforward translation speaks of a technology that exists in almost every country today. All we have to do is change three words in Zechariah to the original translation for the entire paragraph to click together and make sense. The first area we come to is Zechariah 5.6. It is a basket that is going forth. At the bottom of the page in the footnotes we see that this word can be translated as the Hebrew word Epha, which means a measuring container. The next area we come to is translated as a wicked woman or woman. The Hebrew word here is Isha. Masculine pronunciation of the word Isha actually means fire offering or burnt offering as used in the book of Exodus. The final word translated by error is two women which can literally be translated as two of each or two of the same. By inserting these words and using the New King James Version or reverting to the King James Version, we can read the original meaning in Zechariah 5. Then I turned and raised my eyes, and saw there flying roll. And he said to me, What do you see? So I answered, I see a flying Megillah roll. Its length is 20 cubits and its width 10 cubits. Then 
turned and raised my eyes and saw there a flying scroll. And he said to me, What do you see? I see a flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubits and its width 10 cubits. This is the curse that goes out over the face of the whole earth. The Megillah roll was used in ancient times and it contained a roll within it. But what Zechariah saw was far larger in size. I will send out the curse, says the Lord of hosts. It shall enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of his house and consume it with its timber and stones. Then the angel who talked with me came out and said to me, Lift your eyes now and see what this is that goes forth. What is it? At this point, the angel qualifies to Zechariah what the object is. So we read from Zechariah 5 verse 6, it is an ether container that is going forth. No longer is it a Megill roll that Zechariah saw from its shape, but now the angel explains exactly what it is and clarifies to him. The angel carries on. This is their resemblance throughout all the earth. In other words, they're all cylindrical shaped large containers throughout the world. In Zechariah 5.7, the angel goes on to say, Here is a lead disc lifted up, and this is a fire offering sitting inside the container. Then he said, this is wickedness. And he cast it down into the middle, or midst, of the container and threw the weight of lead over the mouth or opening. This is the amazing prophecy of a nuclear missile. It's cylindrical shaped, we have its size, what it does destroys timber and stones and houses and then it describes the element used to protect it from leaking from its opening or mouth such as lead. Interestingly, the word for weight, eben, is used as a metaphor for perverse hard heat, or stones of fire, literally. You would think that's the end of the descriptive prophecy, but Zechariah then looks up once more to see two cylindrical shaped containers. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were two of each coming with the wind in their wings, for they had wings like wings of a stork and they lifted up the ether container between earth and heaven. This is describing the transportation of the nuclear containers, missile or warhead, by military planes. We've established that the shape of the two containers with wings, Zechariah saw, was very much like today's bomber planes. So we read on. So I said to the angel who talked with me, where are they carrying the container? And he said to me, to build a house for it in the land of Shinar. When it is ready, the container will be set there on its base. Later in another prophecy in Zechariah 14, it will lose the effects of a nuclear weapon. We read, And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet, their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. This is what happens in close proximity to a nuclear explosion. So we see the descriptive prophecy from the God who can see the end from the beginning. Is there any other technological insights from scripture? The answer is yes. We will quickly look at these before moving on. In Revelation 11, 7 to 10, there are spoken of two witnesses that prophesy. The two witnesses are assassinated, and in verse 8 it explains that the whole world is able to see their dead bodies. This would have been impossible 2,000 years ago when this was wrote down. 
But today with news on TV, internet and Facebook means that this prophecy is an even more realistic fulfilment for the future. There's another passage in Revelation, which is in Revelation 13 verse 14 to 15, which states, And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast. This is very much like what Nebuchadnezzar did when he erected an image of himself. But it becomes even more interesting what happens to this image in the next verse. In verse 15 we read, he was granted power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. This becomes peculiar that an image or figure of someone, an inanimate object, is able to speak. But this is already a reality with the technology we have today. We now have robots that can talk. You must simply must come to visit me in England. We will, Jules. We'll stay in touch. We emails? Bet. Yeah, emails and phone calls. Amanda, you are rather like a mom and a bit like the sister too. We have holographic images. So what the prophet John saw on the island of Patmos 2,000 years ago is a reality today. We can make an image that talks or could even kill. So we see so far that scripture has some insight into future technology. Amazingly in fine detail. But what's the purpose of God speaking to us about the future if we can't actually change it? From John 13 verse 19, Jesus says, Now I tell you before it comes, that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. This confirms that the reason is to give us faith that God or Christ speaks the truth, especially about the future. Amazingly, God also gives us an indication of when things will happen and how long we have until the time when he comes back to reclaim the earth as his own, his kingdom to the earth. We actually pray this from the Lord's prayer when we say, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We'll look more into this at the end. But first, we need to understand what the Bible says about the final days of earth before his kingdom comes. The collective prophecies of the Bible leave no stone unturned for what financial, political, climatical, cosmic, warfare and religious state of the world is in the time of the end. And when you put it all together, you have an incredible detailed picture of the final days of human history. We go on with our lives day to day doing all the normal everyday living, such as deciding what to eat or drink or what to wear. We make plans ourselves to fill our lives with things that interest us. However, we may only be conscious of it at a certain level, but unaware at the same time that through history, the past, the present and the future, there is evidence of a greater eternal plan unravelling behind the scenes, so to speak. At this point, you've only catched a glimpse of it, but we will look deeper into God's grand scheme of things and discover an amazing plan for our lives and for the future after it is all finished and made new and find God's ultimate plan for the earth.